You cannot, these days, have a villain that doesn't have some epic one-liner or epic monologue at least. But it's the really cold or spooky ones, the best ones that haunt your dreams and leave you hungry for more. Brian Von Vier here. We're going to be talking about what are the scariest or the best lines your villains have ever said. Now you can leave a comment down below with your best lines as well, or you can do it on our subreddit, r slash Mr. Ripper. I'm going to beat you until I'm unconscious. That takes a lot of effort, my guy. For freeing a vampire lord from being trapped within a magic dagger, he said that I could get one favor whenever. Later, fighting a kraken, and my character, John Sharp, pirate swashbuckler, <laughs> nice, was the last of three PCs still conscious. He summoned the vampire for the favor owed. <sighs> Yar, just get the three of us out of here alive. The vampire said, I've only got two hands, John. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh, I got chills. And so John Sharp told him to save his two companions as he faced the Kraken one on one, believing he'd at least saved his friends. Although it actually turns out that vampire lords are not that trustworthy, but that's another story. John was, of course, eaten by the Kraken. A fitting death for a pirate. That vampire, by the way, is an upcoming big bad evil guy now. The consequences of our actions involving that dagger way back when. Ooh. That, that line gave me chills. I'll give you one hour. Tick tock. Do what you feel is needed to prepare yourselves. <laughs> and then I will kill you. That's a quote from a cultist devoted to a Balor. An Abolith who had been taunting the party about their limited existence, about to sick his minions on them just for entertainment, after they rejected his, <clears throat> frankly bogus, offer. Now, show me the tenacity of mortality. Curse of Strahd spoilers, and eh, kind of, so, uh, as always, warning, Curse of Strahd spoilers ahead, please skip ahead, I'm kidding. <laughs> so my party was having a wedding in Barovia, Two PCs were getting married, and so they invited a bunch of Vistani. It was basically a beach episode session. When things were winding down and the Vistani had left, Strahd arrived and one of the players, one of the people who were getting married, started the conversation. Strahd, you wouldn't kill a man on his wedding day, would you? Strahd, knowing the party, has read the Tome of Strahd. <laughs> I would, and I have. And the party was pretty quiet after that. Party has been tracking this group of evil cultists, kills them. They have an intelligent Vorpal sword that spills the beans on what the cultists were up to. That they were trying to get to the corpse of a legendary adventurer to recover a magic amulet from the body. Where are they going to get this corpse? Well, in the middle of the afterlife, which in my setting is a physical place you can walk to, it's also lethally cold, which they're getting around with a magical lantern. So they make their way there, finding the body in a pillar of magically hard ice, which they hack into with the Vorpal Sword. Once they get through, the body animates and flows like paint out of the ice. You've done so well reaching me. Who, who, who are you? <laughs> I was talking to my sword. Oh. I'm currently running Curse of Strahd. Oh, dear God. Spoiler alert. Warning. Spoilers for Curse of Strahd incoming. <laughs> The players went to Castle Ravenloft way too early, so Strahd let them go. Here's the context. The party has barricaded themselves in the castle dining room, using the furniture of course, to rest inside Eliamon's tiny hut. 
The hut dissolves around you and standing there idly swirling a glass of dark red liquid in his hand is Strahd. <laughs> Good evening. You've provided me some slight diversion, but your cowering like this has left me disappointed. While I could obliterate you here and now, as easily as you might pull the wings off of a fly, there would be no challenge in it. With no challenge, victory has no thrill. So go! Improve your strength. Find some trinkets of friends, and come back when you think you're ready. The carriage will be waiting for you. <laughs> After all, I so rarely have guests. Oh, and do put the furniture back how you found it on your way out, won't you? Strahd then walks backwards through the barricade and closed door as if they weren't there, giving a mocking farewell wave as he does so. <laughs> Strahd is one of the baddest mothers on the planet Earth. I've been <clears throat> collecting quotes for use as Strahd in my own campaigns. Here's a few of my favorites. Perhaps you'll find one or two useful. Uh, uh, warning! <laughs> Curse of Strahd spoilers possibly ahead. <laughs> you cling to life like a rebellious teen resisting curfew. But death is patient, and so am I. You are difficult to ignore. <laughs> But it is well worth the effort. It's a dangerous thing, having a conscience. I will show you the justice of the grave, and the true meaning of fear. Nothing unites people like tragedy. History is littered with the husks of broken men who gave their lives to bring glory to their betters. There is a fine line between consideration and hesitation. The former is wisdom. The latter is fear. Wisdom is the offspring of suffering in time. Loyalty is a fire that spreads quickly if the forest is dry. And here's some uh, Strahd quotes as well. <laughs> Ooh, mm. You are here because I willed it. You exist because I allow it, and when you die, it shall be as I demand it. <laughs> you wish to know what I seek. From you I seek someone capable, someone worthy. Worthy of the gifts I have to give and the power that lies unclaimed. Are any of you as such? What makes you greater than the hundreds who have come before you? Then the hundreds who have died, writhing in pain, grasping at their own entrails. From your recent tragic escapades, I think not. You heroes are all the same. I could teach you a thousand lessons across a thousand lifetimes, and you would still learn nothing. Bravo! <laughs> Bravo. Your persistence is admirable. Yet like those who have come before you, you are willfully blind. Trust is an illusion, a lie, a fabrication. Secrets are the currency of power, and you are beggars amongst kings. Please continue in your fruitless endeavors. <laughs> For your persistence is my entertainment. All that is required to leave this place is my permission, or my life. The former shall never be given, and the latter shall never be taken. For the last man who tried as such now lives with a mind so utterly broken. He wanders the hillsides, believing himself an elk. <laughs> Run, little Bambi. Was it naivete or hubris that allowed you to believe that you could enter, without invitation, into the lair of a dark lord 
and escape without retribution. <sighs> now all of Barovia shall suffer for your hubris. All will know that while each of you lives, there shall only be darkness. Strahd pulls the sun from the sky, plunging Barovia into eternal night. I am Strahd von Zarovic, and this is my game. I legitimately had one of my villains say the I hope they remember you line that Thanos delivers in Infinity War, but it was about five months before the movie came out. It was very appropriate because he had said it to an Oath of Glory paladin right after dropping him the first time. As a player, one villain once said, <laughs> You are going to hate me for this. I'm going to enjoy your hatred. It will destroy you sooner or later. Then he cut off one of the PC's heads. Now as a DM, one of the players was sitting in a room trying to bargain with the villain to make him stop attacking his hometown. The PC offered that he would serve the villain for one year if the villain promises to leave the country. The villain said, <laughs> I love how vain you are. You really think that one year of your pathetic existence is worth more than a few hundred souls? Go back to your little town and die like a man they expect you to be. Valiant effort. Unfortunately, I already have what I most desire. Goodbye. Spoiler alert, this is from Strahd. <laughs> Strahd piecing out after watching the party fight a giant angry tree blight. Five seconds later, the party realized they'd left Irina unattended for three days. Add an in. Oh boy. Final boss of my campaign's arc. An unholy merger of entropic energy and the corpse of a corrupted sun goddess. Came onto the scene with this line. Now I am become the void. Made flesh. The death of hope. Who amongst you can stand against annihilation? The who can stand against annihilation line has been spoken in one form or another by every villain in the campaign, each of which had been corrupted by fragments of the dead sun goddess. The players spent the campaign retrieving the items to try and purge them of corruption. So there was history behind it. Final thing it said before the druid wrecked it with a sunbeam was, I will be waiting for you in the darkness <laughs> at the end of time. <sighs> After all the stars go out. The druid had a very well-developed philosophy about energy flowing from the stars into living things. So it worked pretty good. An evil bard having an epic bard off with our bard. That's a lot of barding. You call that wit? Please, you can't even muster a rising action, much less a climax. Mwah. Right before critting on his rapier attack and downing our bard. Dude, that bard is charismatic as fuck. An entire campaign of making my players hate the big bad evil guy's lieutenants they only heard of the BBEG from historical documents and tales. They reached the location of what they thought was going to be a final battle. A dead city blocked off by a magical barrier created by the gods. <laughs> the party was helping, not necessarily serving, but the gods were weakened from the previous war with the BBEG and couldn't communicate directly until the players brought their sigils together. When they entered the dead city, they were expecting a necropolis. Instead, it was an abandoned, ruined city. Their most hated lieutenant, an illusionist who constantly messed with them and put them through several horrific illusions during the boss fight with her, was sitting there. She launched into a monologue about how the gods the party served sent their champions to destroy her city for no reason. Then she used her magic to show them that day from her perspective. She was running to meet friends and head to the local magic academy. 
where she was an apprentice illusionist. She met a boy she knew and his pet snake, two of the other lieutenants, and when her friends went to tease them, suddenly a building exploded, ba-boom, and crushed them. She turns to the party and says, It's been so long, they don't even remember their faces. She sows the more and more of the destruction, the boy nearly dying trying to protect her, civilians slaughtered in the streets, and how the only thing that saved them was a mysterious portal that appeared and left them with the choice to die or jump in it. And that's how they met the big bad evil guy. She ends her tale explaining that she and the remaining lieutenants are waiting for them in the city square. And then she vanishes. Her speech and mannerisms were done so well, feedback from my players, that my players looked at each other and said, Holy shit, are we the baddies? When the party first encountered Mind Flayers, We are the Illithid, the pinnacle of evolution and existence. We will impose order on the chaos of your individuality. Surrender yourselves, and your existence will be preserved in the Elder Brain for all eternity. Resist, and your pathetic existence will end. To be forgotten by the incessant march of time. The party's one-liner... How about we kill you instead? <laughs> yeah. Your threats are as empty as your minds. The thoughts of this individual have already been transferred to the hive and preserved by the elder brain. Killing it is an exercise in futility. We have perfected thousands of civilizations before you and will continue to do so once this one has been eradicated. Serve us or face your doom. Hey everyone, Brian Von Vier here back at it again, checking in after the vid. Man, do I love things like this. One-liners, ooh, <laughs> chef kiss. Make sure to leave a like to subscribe to ring that bell and to comment down below some of your best one-liners for villains or maybe even party members too. And you can do so on our subreddit, r slash Mr. Ripper. Lastly, if you want to check out me, Brian Von VA, you can do so down below in the description at brianvonva.com. Come check me out on Twitch. That's where I mainly work out and do stuff. Now, I try to end things on a positive and because we're running a little bit long on time, I just want to say one thing. Everybody's got a place in this world. Sometimes you might not know what it is right away, and you might feel like the world is oversaturated with a lot of nonsense. But everyone's different, and I don't mean that as a snowflake type thing. I mean, like, we all have our own unique personality and ways that we experience the world. Share it with everybody else. Show the world who you are, because you might make something beautiful out of it. I love you all. Be safe, be happy, and I'll see you next time.